Can you one more time just let us know what your full name is? Flora Baird Miller. Okay. And when and where were you born? I was born in Cali, Bighorn County, Wyoming on the 5th of November, 1923. Perfect. And who is your mother? Susie Marie Bassett Baird. Uh-huh. Perfect. And how, how did you guys come to live there? Actually, I should ask, what's, what's your father's name as well? Everett Baird. Uh -huh. And how did you guys come to live in Cowley? Well, uh, in 1900, the uh, settled in Bighorn County there. And the, my parents, or my father's parents, settled in Cowley, Wyoming. And my mother uh, was born in Afton, Wyoming, and her parents moved to Lovell in, I don't know just when it was, it was early 1900s. And my parents met and were married in the Salt Lake Temple in 1917, I think it was. And they had to drive from Cali to Salt Lake to marry. Yeah, yes. So that was the closest. Yes, that, the Salt Lake Temple was the closest temple. When, when we got married, we were married in the Salt Lake Temple. Mm -hmm. So, but I was not living in Cali at the time. So I had to go from California. <laughs> Even farther. <laughs> Quite a drive. Crazy. So you are the... I'm the fifth child. Okay. Uh, I have three brother, three sisters and a brother older than me, and three sisters and a brother younger than me. <laughs> kind of the middle. So one. I'm the middle one. <laughs> I was always too old to do things with the younger kids and too young to do things with the older kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, bummer. <laughs> okay. And would you like to tell us their names just real quick, your brothers and sisters? Just their first names, sure. like uh, June, and Helen, Leo, Catherine, Bessie, Rhea, Alice, and Frank. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And what things would you like to do with your brothers and sisters when you're living, when you're growing up? Did you did you grow we, up in Cali? Or? Yes, I did. And we used to play. I don't know whether you know what Andy I over is when you throw the ball over the house and. You have two two sides, one on each side, and if you catch the ball, why well, then you can go around and cry, try to catch somebody from the other side, and you run uh, around the house to keep from being caught. And then we used to play Run Sheepy Run. There was a vacant lot just west of our our place, and we all the kids in the neighborhood would come, and and we would play divide up in two teams and play run sheepy run and we would one team would stay at the at the fire and, and hide our eyes while the other team went and found a place to hide and then when we would go to hunt for them if we uh, saw them why well, we'd holler run sheepy run and the ones that got back to the campfire first was was the one that was the winners uh -huh. so it was a lot of fun we had a it was an LDS community and so we had a lot of uh, LDS friends. I mean, there was only like 500 people in Cowley, in the t town of Cowley, why there's only about 500 people. Mm -hmm. But we had lots of friends, and we were all uh, about, well, like I say, it was just the neighborhood kids that would come there and, and play, play games. Mm -hmm. And did they all go to school with you as well? Yes. We had a... Uh, a high school and a elementary school and when I started the school I was uh, I started my birthday was in November so I wasn't six until November but uh, there was about 22 kids in my class and that's the way it was nearly all the way through school was uh, about that that many between 20 and 25 kids in each each class wow. so it was we had we had good times fun times together uh -huh. I can imagine you probably knew everybody pretty well then 
oh yes. I mean, there were only two kids in the whole high school when I went to high school that were not LDS. The, uh, and so we all went to church together and we all did things together. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it was fun. And how was school done? You guys, it wasn't like the one room schoolhouse where they teach everybody in the same grade. Oh no, we had a, a two story, uh, well both the high school and the junior, or the elementary school was two stories. And we had separate rooms for each class, so. I went one through the sixth grade in the elementary school, and then the uh, we went to the high school building and had the seventh and eighth grade there, as well as uh, all of our high school classes. Wow! And we had a cro just a little ways in the same block as the as the high school. We had a a building that we used to go to seminary in. We would, and we had release time seminary, and so we would go over to the seminary building and have our seminary. Wow, that's nice. So you didn't have to wake up early for seminary. No, no, we didn't have early morning seminary. Let's <laughs> say we had release time. Uh -huh. What was your house like growing up in Cowley? Do you want to talk about that at all, or well, how many rooms? And... Well, when uh, when I was born, my parents lived in a just a two room house. Mm -hmm. And then later on they added on to it and added three bedrooms onto it because there were ten of us. N nine, uh, well most of the time it was nine because Frank is, he's 14 years younger than I am. And so he was six years younger than my youngest sister. And so it's, uh, we were crowded. <laughs> it was, but we raised a big garden all the time, and I told Janice that I weeded ten rows of little onions, you know, the seed onions, and uh, we'd work out in the garden, and we had uh, raised some calves. That uh, we had two or three milk cows, and they saved milk and fed to the to the calves and, and raised calves. That was part of our livelihood was the the, the animals that we raised. Uh -huh. so. And you sold them for meat or was it for milk? Or? Uh, well, both. Uh -huh. or, or we sold them, whichever, okay. you know, that when we had chickens, pigs, and one time we had some uh, bum lambs that we fed off the bottle and raised them. It was all just to make a living. Mm -hmm. So these were all your chores? You had to work out on the farm? And... Well, no, we weren't on a farm. Oh, okay. We, uh, we did have a farm, that, but it was not connected to, it was four miles from, from where we lived. And I remember we did live out there one spring uh, and rode the school bus to, to school. But uh, uh, most of the time we lived there in the house there in Cowley. Mm -hmm. And I forgot to ask, were you born in a hospital or? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was born at home. Uh huh. Just with a midwife or just? I don't know for sure. Uh, there was a doctor, but he would go uh, around to the people's homes. Now, what about the movies? You said something about Helen and Catherine cleaning the... They used to the clean theater. the theater, yes. Oh. They cleaned the theater and they would get uh, free tickets to go to the theater. So we got to go once in a while, you know, when there was something good to, that was worth going to see, why we, we would get to go uh, to the theater. Right. So and I used to babysit. Uh -huh. I babysat for... One woman that I would go every afternoon to her place and stay for a couple of hours, and I'd get ten cents for for babysitting, and then I babysat. I babysat for uh, he was our bishop, Bishop Harston, but they were also had the the mail, 
and they they sorted the mail at, at the post office and they didn't deliver mail around like they do now each family had a mail box a post office box and uh, I would go and stay at their place with their kids while his wife went and helped in the in the post office in the afternoon and I got oh I I think I got a dollar and a quarter a week if I remember right for for doing that, why that, that was what I got paid, but then a dollar and a quarter was worth a lot more than what it is now. Mm -hmm. So, did you have electricity in your home growing up? Yes, we did. First, first we had gas lights. The you know they had mandals on them, and it's it's like, but it was the natural gas. We we had natural gas uh, in our home. And uh, then, then we, I remember when we got the electricity. Why it was, of course, it was brighter than the gas lights. But the gas lights, they had, there was two mandals that was inside of a uh, glass. Well, it wasn't glass. It was uh, I don't know what <laughs> it was. But anyway, and, and that that was better light than most people. Uh, in other places, because they had just the kerosene lam lamps, mm -hmm. but but we did have uh, the the gas lights. Wow. You guys, yeah. What about refrigerators? Well, I remember when we got our uh, our first refrigerator. We didn't get one for quite a while, and we used to take a, a ten pound lard bucket with milk in it over to my mother's aunt's place and we would put that in her refrigerator and then at night why we would go get it and bring it home so we'd have cold milk for for our supper. Tell her what you ate for supper. Bread and milk. With what? With homemade bread. And? Onions. <laughs> <laughs> Is that something you got out of your garden? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. We, we raised the onions. I remember one year Mama planted ten rows of the seed onions. And you know when they come up, they're only just about this big. And we had to weed those and thin them. We worked in the garden. If we hadn't had a garden, we probably would have starved to death, but we had a big garden. Our lot was an acre and a quarter. And on the back side, they, they built a chicken coop that went quite a long ways. And down to the bottom, the it was a little bit... Uh, What's the word I want to use? Anyway, it wasn't good soil. And so they cut that off, put a fence there, and made it for pasture for calves. And then the rest of it, other than where our house was, why was, was mostly was garden. And so we worked in the garden a lot. And uh, Mama canned 300 quarts of green beans, corn, and uh, things like this from the garden that that we had raised. Uh -huh. So, And that would keep until the winter? So mm -hmm. Well, that that would go through the winter. I mean, that's what we, we would put it in the cellar. We had a, a cellar underneath our house where it was cool, and yet it wouldn't, didn't freeze. And we would put our fruits and vegetables in there so we'd have food for the winter. Were there stores and stuff? Yes, just... yes. Well, there was. There were two. At one time, there was two drug stores, and there was one, two, three, three uh, like grocery stores. They were kind of not only grocery stores, but they had one was like would have some uh, oh, things that you might need on the farm. You could buy a hoe or you could buy a, a rake or something like this in the, in these stores. Mm -hmm. And we lived only about a block and a half from the grammar school, so we just walked to school, you know, it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, I, I just had a thought. Did you guys have an outhouse? Was that? Yes, we did. <laughs> Is that a bad question? How far was it from the yeah, house? Well, it was 
A hike, huh? <laughs> uh, I don't know how far, but some of the garden was in between there, and we'd have to go around the garden and down to the outhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys make your own? Like, do you have to just dig a hole for those? I don't know. Yes, exactly yes. They. We had the same outhouse all the time that that we had one, but they dug a hole and then set this over the top of it. They they only made it like so wide so that uh, and so wide this way. There was two. It was a two holer. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were always just one hole. <laughs> no, ours was two. There was a bigger one and a littler one so that the... Children didn't fall through. Didn't fall through, <laughs> yeah. And then there was an opening in the back that they could clean it out or else they would dig a new hole and move it over, but they didn't do that very often, you know. Uh -huh. But it was... They tried to clean it out then. Oh, yeah, they would, they would clean it out. Oh boy, things we don't even think about anymore. You know? Well, that's uh, in in my lifetime. You know, things have changed so much since. Uh, <laughs> well, see, I started to school in what twenty nine or twenty eight. I, I was, I hadn't turned six yet. So it would have been 29. 29 that I started to school. And uh, they, they don't, there's so many things that have changed in those years, you know, that you'd be shocked. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> if you went to see what we went through when, when we were kids, but... It was, uh, we, had, we had a good family and it, we had a good life. Mm -hmm. When uh, I was younger, I, I sat next to my dad at the table and I would start to eat with my left hand and he would tell me to put my spoon in the other hand, so I would. And I'd put it in the other hand and, and eat. So now, I mean, I still do lots of things left-handed that I... that I didn't get changed in, I guess. In, in fact, when I started to learn to bowl, why I, they, the bowling balls are cut for right-handed people. And the bowling shoes are made for right-handed, right-footed people. And so I decided, well, I just switched hands and learned to bowl right-handed. And, uh, when Bessie went to school, the teacher tried, she was, she is left-handed, and she tried to change her. She had the same first grade teacher I did, and uh, they tried to change her, and she would just sit and hold her pencil in her right hand. She wouldn't even try to write with it, and so Mama went to school and told the teacher, you've got to let her use her left hand, and she definitely is, is left-handed. I, I do some things left-handed, I hold left-handed, and <laughs> things that I didn't get changed in, why I still, I still do left-handed. So it just makes, uh, I don't know whether it's worse or better to, have <laughs> to be ambidextrous. <laughs> when did you move from Cowley? Was that when you went to college? Or? No. Uh, during the, it was during World War II, and I, uh, I worked, uh, in the canning factory. Yes, I worked in the canning factory. Uh, the, the year I graduated from high school, I worked in the canning factory, and, uh, I, in fact, I worked part of two seasons, and the, I belonged to the, National Youth Association, and through them, I got uh, a chance to go to uh, Cheyenne to work, Cheyenne, Wyoming, to work. 
and uh, I went down there and took some classes and then I, I went to work uh, in Cheyenne and I worked in the is that when I worked at the Wyatt Manufacturing Company and I worked in the core room where they made the they, they poured the it was in the foundry in the there and uh, they made valves for for the ships and I uh, worked in the core room where they made the the part that went in the middle that, and then they'd put those in the f f the brass forms huh in the brass in in the farms and then pour the brass around them and, and so then after they got cooled and everything why they'd found out that little core that we had made to put in the middle of it why that so that made left a hole in the middle of the of the valve yeah and I worked there for a year or maybe a little bit longer than that and June my oldest sister was living in Vallejo and working down there and she wrote and asked me why I didn't come down there and stay so I I went to, to Vallejo and, and lived with them in, in Vallejo and, and worked on Mare Island. And I worked in the uh, foundry there, but it was a, they made lots bigger things. And so I worked in the, in the shop office. They had me work in the shop office. And uh, so I didn't have to do all this heavy stuff. Uh -huh. So, uh, and that's where I met Lowell. Mm -hmm. He uh, he was in the Navy and had gone to, uh, no, let's see. I don't remember where he had been, but when he came back, he he went down to the South Pacific. I think he went to the Philippines. And when he came back, why well, he came to see June and Charlie. Charlie was his brother and June was my sister. And he came to see them and that's where I met how I met him, and uh, wasn't he having some dental work? Yes, they sent him to Treasure Island to have some dental work done, and uh, he he came and and stayed. Well, he was stationed on Treasure Island for a while while he had his dental work done, and it was only like. What thirty miles, or no, it was might be a little farther than that, to to San Francisco from from Vallejo, where I was living with them, mm -hmm. and uh, he came to see him, and that's where it all got started. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, do you want to just talk about clubs or groups or sports or anything that you did in high school? Well. Uh, like I say, I was in the pep squad, and we used to go and cheer, you know, at all the football and basketball games. And we got to go some of the time to other towns to to go. There was Collie and Lovell and Byron and Cody and Powell and that were in our area that that we got to go to. And I was in the in the band and we uh, they used to have a, a music festival in the spring. And we would go to one year we went to Cody, and one year we went to Thermopolis, and uh, we would go over there and and pre-farm, and then we would march in the in the parade. They would have a, a a parade, and we would march in the in the parades. And uh, tell Sally what instrument you played. Oh, I played the baritone. Is that like a trump? No. It it's this. It's in the trumpet in the. That it's a three valve instrument, and but it's it's big. It had a, a bell out to the side, you know. That so. see where you get your that's how to the play. Karen and Heather play too. Huh? Well, great. And you would that was when you would march in the parade, was in the band, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. And how how big was your band? Just out of curiosity, we had a we had a pretty good sized band for the size of our high school. 
Why, we had probably, oh, I don't know, 40 or 50 students in the band. That's pretty good. And, and that's what said, we had a good band. Now, there were, you had several friends, like five girls. You called yourselves the... Oh, the ten, ten tribes. tribes. There was nine of us. Okay. Tell, that would be fun. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why not, Mom? Well, it was just uh, <laughs> there. There were there were nine of us, mm -hmm. and and they were all kids there and from from Cowley that uh, we used to play games together. And that's the ones I said when we went down to the uh, empty lot, you know, and played played games. And uh, we uh, got something in my mouth. Well kept up with them, though, at, even after high school. Yes. Well, see, Virginia Baker, that lives in uh, Idaho. Idaho, she she's one of them. And we went to see her, and we took her to the temple with us, didn't we? The Twin Falls Temple. Uh huh. Took, went to the Twin Falls Temple and picked her up, and we had a good time talking about our old times. You know why it was. And there's only. I think Marie Moore and Regina and I, I think, are, are the only ones that are left out of the the group of kids that that I run around with when I was a teenager. Uh -huh. The Ten Tribes. Huh? And they yeah. called us the Ten Tribes. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering, were you a, a good student, or were you a troublemaker, or? I. Uh, <laughs> Well, I used to get on the honor roll once in a while, and <laughs> I got, I was at least an average student, I mean, and I didn't cause much trouble. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> never know, you got to ask. Well, we, we probably did some things that, in fact, the bunch of us hitchhiked to level one time, and, uh, well, it was only five miles, and uh, who was it that stopped and picked us up? And took us to level, and you know, we just did lots of things together that uh, more it seemed like we had more fun than a lot of other people because they didn't have the, the groups like we had. So it was, it, it was good. And you were born into the church, right? You were baptized when you were eight, and Mm -hmm. And your parents were members. Yes. Did they were they converts or were they also? Uh, church? They they were members of the church. I I don't remember how old. Let's see. My dad was born in nineteen. No. Let's see. Mama was born in eighteen ninety nine, and Daddy was born in ninety three, eighteen ninety three, and they his parents had come from. Scotland and uh, so he had been a member they'd been members of the church all their life mm -hmm. so that was just the thing for us to do was to be baptized when we were old enough to be baptized mm -hmm. so and do you remember anything about your grandparents did you ever get to see them? oh yes yes uh, in fact uh, Grandma Bassett didn't die until after we were married and uh Grandma and Grandpa Baird died when I was younger, but I did. I do remember them. We we used to go over to to Grandma Baird's because she lived just kitty cornered. It was a square block, and we lived in this corner, and they lived in that corner, and we we could go through the back way and, and go over to Grandma Baird's, and she used to give us Was it homemade biscuits? Because Mama never made never made biscuits. She, Mama didn't like hot bread, and so she she didn't ever make biscuits. But but Grandma Bear did, and she'd give us some hot biscuits. And, and of course, of course, we liked to go to Grandma's. <laughs> and where did your Grandma and Grandpa Bassett live? Well, they 
they lived used to live down to Cain, and then they moved to uh, up to Level. So we got to go down there sometimes and stay in the summertime down to Grandma's, and. Uh, So I knew all of my grandparents, and in fact, I knew uh, Great Grandma Bassett, Gram Grandma's mother. But see, she she was a Bassett, and she married a Bassett. So, but uh, Grandpa's parents were not members of the church, but Grandma's were. Grandpa Baird's. Grandpa Bassett. See, his name was Bassett, and Grandma's name was Bassett. That could get confusing. Yeah. <laughs> they were, I think, like maybe third cousins or something. You go back a ways, and you'll run into the same. If you look on your my pedigree chart, you'll find that they run into the same uh, Bassett name back farther. So... So you met him in Vallejo because your sister was staying in Vallejo. She she was living in in Vallejo and she was married to Charlie, Lowell's brother. Uh -huh. So. And he came and met you. And do you remember your first date or anything or <laughs> or any date? I guess. I was trying to think. <clears throat> I think probably the first date we went on was we went went to the picture show. I, I'm not sure whether that was, uh, but I worked on was working on Mare Island at the time, and he would come over to June and Charlie's, and then I would ride the the ferry across uh, over to Mare Island, and he he would come from he was over in San Francisco and he would come from San Francisco and then he would come down to the ferry and meet me when I would come home from work I work swing shift and so it would be midnight so he would come to the to the ferry and walk home with me uh, there, there were buses that were available that we could ride but then the buses went clear around and went across the the causeway and but it was easier for me to go down to the ferry and come across over to Carquinas Heights and then quite often why he if he was there why he would come down there and meet me otherwise why I would catch a bus from there and and go home on the bus uh -huh. but it was probably more fun to walk with him too, well right? sure <laughs> <laughs> And is there anything about your courtship that you remember that, like, do you remember, like, how he proposed or anything like that? Well, it wasn't very romantic. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember now what it was that was said. And I said, oh, let's see, what was it I said? And he says, well, I've got, some, I, I've got something that I think I can change your mind. And, and that's when he gave me my ring. He he already had it, and and I can't remember now what it was, what it was said. But that's that's what he said when I, uh, when he gave me the ring was that he had something that I could change my mind, that could change it. And so we, uh, we spent as much time probably uh, at night because I worked swing shift. Well, I didn't work very long after I, uh, after we got married. Four months, maybe. Because I didn't want to work after I showed and go over there where the sailors were and what have you, you know. <laughs> Well, it wasn't very long. Well, Evelyn was born in April 1944. Mm-hmm. And you came to be with June then. And you guys 
guys got married in February after that. Of 45. So, yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't very long. No, no. <laughs> wow. So you were married in the Salt Lake Temple? Mm-hmm. On the 13th of February, 1945. Somebody asked me why we didn't wait until the 14th and be married on Valentine's Day. But in order for us to have any time, he had 10 days leave. In order for us to have any time, why we thought, well, see, the, at that time, you had to get your temple recommend, and they send it to the temple. We didn't get it and, and could go to any temple we wanted to like you can now. And uh, But they sent our temple recommend to the temple. And when we got to Salt Lake, our temple recommends weren't there. And so uh, Grandma Bassett was staying there in Salt Lake with Maud Butter. And we went to her place, and we stayed at her place. And then we went and had an interview with uh, Ezra Taft Benson. And he called our stake presidents, or yeah, our stake presidents, and to get, so we could get a recommend, so we could go to the temple. And uh, uh, Nate Hurst was the uh, stake president in Reno. <laughs> was it Reno? And he hadn't even gotten the information from, and so they t they talked to him, and and then he called Bishop Crook, who was our bishop, and talked to him to see if it was all right to give Lowell recommend because he was in the Navy and hadn't been home for a while, and being he was in Reno and of course we were in in Fallon, and uh, so he he didn't the state president didn't even remember who Lowell was, you know. So <laughs> so they called uh, Bishop Crook, and they they finally got us a recommend so we could <laughs> go to the temple. I had never told you that story. I didn't remember that part. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, fiasco. I, I thought you couldn't get a, t a marriage license because the courthouse was closed. Well, we, yeah, on the... Twelfth, yeah, it was Lincoln's birthday, and we couldn't get a a marriage license, but we didn't. <laughs> you had one thing after another. <laughs> but I think we were supposed to get married. I think so. <laughs> I think so too. Because of all the problems we had. Why? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and was anyone able to come to your wedding? Or? My grandmother was there. She was staying in Salt Lake, so yeah, in Salt Lake there with Maud Butter, and I stayed at her place. And uh, where did Lowell stay that night? Whether he stayed there, too, I don't remember. But anyway, she, my grandmother, went to the temple with me. And she showed you around, and <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> it's kind of nice. To have it was to nice to have somebody there to, that. But Lowell didn't have anybody with him. So you took out your endowments at about the same time, right? As the wedding. It was right before the ceremony. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend that, right? <laughs> well, I mean, how else were we going to do it? Yeah. So it is so much different now than it was then. And Grandpa, he... He didn't serve a mission, did he? No. That's right. He went. When did he join the Navy? When he was like 19 or something? He he joined the Navy in. Was it 41 or 42? Two. Huh? 42. And was he drafted or did no. he just join up? No, he joined up because <clears throat> he said he would rather uh, have a bed to sleep in than sleep in a foxhole. And so he figured if he was in the Navy, he'd have a bed to sleep in. And so, of course, when he was board ship, why, they they had a bed, you know. And uh, so that's why he was in the in the Navy. Mm -hmm. Any, like, well, it 
let's see. So you guys got married on that 10-day leave. Mm -hmm. and then, then, then we went to Wyoming. We took a bus and went to Wyoming so he could meet my family. <laughs> Your family had no, Mom and Daddy hadn't. June was the only one that... Uh, and they were okay with you getting married to somebody they didn't know. Well, June was married to Charlie, and this was Charlie's brother, so if Charlie was good enough for June, why Lowell was good enough for me. <laughs> I guess they didn't have much of a choice either. No. <laughs> you came back because you were already married. <laughs> So. And I guess you probably had a reception there and stuff, or did they do that? Back well, then? no, not really. <laughs> we had they had a shower for me. Uh, I think they had a, a shower for me there in in Cali when we went home a after we were married, and I think they did the same thing down in in Vallejo. Why well, they had a, a shower for us, so. But we didn't have a reception like, uh, we we kind of did, in Vallejo. It wasn't like what they these big fancy receptions that they have now. But we did have, uh, a reception. Mm -hmm. So you, let's see. So we only had ten days. So mm -hmm. after Cali, you drove back to Vallejo. No, we didn't drive. We rode on the bus. Oh, rode on the bus. Because right. we did not have a car. I mean, and gas was rationed at the time, and mm -hmm. uh, it was just, you know, Charlie had a car, but uh, but we didn't. Do you remember other things that were rationed, like that you had to to save and? Well, there were some foods that were rationed, uh, and I can't remember now. Huh? Sugar. Sugar was, yes, definitely sugar was. And what would you have to do to get sugar? Well, we had tickets that that we could take and, and get 10 pounds or whatever, but we only had so many tickets, and they had to last us so long, you know, that it, it was... Uh, just harder to to get some some of the f foods. Mm -hmm. Meat was very scarce, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I don't remember whether we had uh, whether the meat was rationed, whether we could get it with the tickets or not. But I know that that sugar was. So Grandpa went back out to sea after you guys got married. Mm -hmm. And how how long was he gone? He was gone for five months. That was the longest time he was gone. Well, uh, I mean, he'd go out. He was on a troop transport ship, see, and so he was a gunner on the troop transport ships, and so he stayed with the with the ship. And they would go and take him to the Philippines. He went to the Philippines, and he went to different places like that. But he would just go, and then he'd come back. And this time, he was gone five months. So. That's right after you're married. Just yeah. So, my mom was a honeymoon baby, right? Yep, yep, definitely. <laughs> so you were alone for the first five months of pregnancy? Mm -hmm. Well, I stayed with, I was staying with June and Charlie. I stayed there. Then after he came back, why would, then we got a place of our own. But it was... Oh, I can't even imagine. <laughs> that sounds so terrible. <laughs> Did you get sick at all? Do you remember? Or? Do you know if I hadn't missed my periods, I'd have never known I was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> no way, really? It was just easy, yeah. huh? I, I had a very easy time. That is good. Especially since your husband was gone. <laughs> oh, shoot. That is great. I hope I'm like you. <laughs> Hold on. So was Grandpa surprised to find you five months pregnant when he got back? Oh, no. <laughs> because we corresponded. <laughs> uh -huh. So was that through mail, or how did you guys correspond? Mail. Uh -huh. <laughs> I 
I just wonder how they got it out to the troop transport. Philippines and stuff. Like how, did they just have ships that delivered the mail to them? Uh-huh. It, it's totally different from what it is now. I mean, I mean now you can... Email and use your what your cell phones and <laughs> and I don't know how to to do them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well. All right. So. But no, we didn't email. We just uh, air mailed. Air mail. Mm -hmm. Send them air mail. And did it take a long time to get? Sometimes it depended on where he was, you know. So. I'm sure you were. I've, I've still got a whole bag of letters. Really? That. Yep. Fun. That would be fun. So, did, were you ever worried about him? Like, was he ever in lots of danger? Or? Well, most of the time not. Because, like I say, he he transported they transported the the troops to these areas and most of the time why he was just aboard ship he was a gunman on the aboard ship and uh, most of the time why it wasn't as dangerous as the ones that were in on the front lines and this you know why but he was it was, he was safer. Mm -hmm. So, describe, a, well, when did Grandpa get out of the Navy when the war was over, right? Uh-huh. Okay, and then after that, where was he employed and stuff? What did he well, uh, he worked on Mare Island for a little while, but then when they, after the armistice was signed, we came back to Fallon. It was in July, wasn't it, of 46, that we came to Fallon. So you had a little tiny baby with you and you came back, huh? Mm -hmm. And so what family did he have in Fallon? That's where he grew That's up? That's where he was born and raised, was in Fallon. So his parents were there and, and uh, his... His brother Dale was in the Air Force, and he never did come back to Fallon to live. And Alfred was in the Navy, and uh, Harry was, uh, he worked for the, uh, what, down in, in uh, Davis? Huh? In Davis, Davis uh-huh. Worked for the Department of Agriculture. Yeah. And then... Charlie and George May were all in Fallon. Yeah. They all came back to Fallon. Then there was Raymond, but... Raymond was an invalid. Huh? Raymond was housebound. Yeah, he was a... Uh, what's the word? I say invalid. I mean, he couldn't do anything no. for himself. And who's, who's Raymond? That's Lowell's youngest brother. Oh, really? Okay. And then, then Georgia was younger than Raymond was. Mm -hmm. So once once you guys came back, where did you live? Where, did you just get a house? or? Well, we bought a house on uh, West Williams Avenue. And uh, Lavelle... Robinson came down and loaded all of ours and all of Charlie's stuff in his uh, truck and, and brought it back. And uh, June and Charlie bought a house. Just uh, they didn't get it as soon as we got ours, so they stayed there with us for for a while until they got their house and got it set up. It was only four or five houses down from us. So you know where their house was. Oh, yeah. It's not there anymore now. Mm -hmm. Fallon grew too much. They bought all that property and 
So later on, why he did uh, work for Grandpa, and uh, we traded places with them. They moved into our place in town, and we moved out to the ranch, and uh, did the did the farming and. Then, uh, is that close to where you live now? Yes. Down the lane? It's, instead of being up on the hill where we are, it was right there where you turned to go up to our place Why the, there was a house right there. Mm-hmm. And that's where you raised your children and stuff? Mm-hmm. Okay. How long did you live in that house? It was quite a few years, right, while you were raising your kids? Did we live there? Did we live there when Elaine was born? And she was born in 58. Mm-hmm. And you bought, you didn't get your house up on the hill until um, the 80s? Mm-hmm. About 1980, so probably 25 years or so you were down in the. Wow. But they were in town uh-huh. until that. We lived in. So how old were you when they moved to 12? You were 12. Uh-huh. Okay. So where did your kids go to school? In Fallon. Uh-huh. The school bus picked them up and <laughs> Hauled us around. took them to town. <laughs> and that's about five or ten miles away, right, the school? It's about seven. Mm-hmm. Seven miles to town. I guess that would be more of questions to ask you later, huh? <laughs> 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 so what did you have... What kind of jobs did you guys have to do while you lived out there on the farm? What did you have your kids do and what did you do? Hold in the garden and pulled weeds and <laughs> what else did you do, Janice? <laughs> we did sugar beets one summer. <laughs> they only raised sugar beets one year. <laughs> Are they bad to... Well, they didn't have the equipment and the things that they needed to do it and it was it, it's too what's the word I want to use time consuming and uh, Lowell just wasn't interested I mean after the one year why that, that was enough of that <laughs> too much manual labor and then he worked for Frank Gastite saning fish saning fish what is what does that mean? Like breeding fish? No, no, they'd go and have these uh, nets. nets that they would go and, and get them and catch the fish and put them into their. Uh, they must have had a truck. They did, but I was trying to think what to call it. They had ice in it that, so they could keep them, keep them fresh. Well, there's Walker Lake, there's uh, Pyramid. Pyramid Lake, there was Lahontan Valley, or Lahontan Dam Reservoir. And didn't they take the fish to San Francisco? Weren't they catching catfish and they'd take them down to the Chinese? Well, it wasn't catfish. Oh, okay. It was uh, like a carp. Filipinos or Chinese or somebody in San Francisco because they wanted those trash fish. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what they were really is. Trash fish. <laughs> you mean stuff that you guys wouldn't eat? or right. No, we didn't ever eat any of them. <laughs> so he did this on the side um, of working on the farm? Well, at that time he probably wasn't working on the farm. Okay. Uh, and he worked for Chet Williams that year, that he worked out there on the dairy. That he, he wasn't. Well, see, Grandpa was still doing the farming. and uh, But when we moved back, why then he kind of retired and Lowell took over. In fact, we bought the ranch from him. Um, Grandpa Miller. Oh, okay. Grandpa's dad. Yeah. Lowell's dad. Yeah. <laughs> Why well, we bought it, bought it from him. Uh-huh. 
And that was when you switched places and stuff. And did you have milk cows or what? No, Lold wouldn't raise milk cows. <laughs> we had beef cattle. Them up and well, see, he could put them, we had a pasture down by the Navy base, and we would trail them down there, and they just stayed down there on the pasture for the summertime, and then we'd trail them home in the fall, and they would do the branding and whatever they had to do with them, and then they would put them out into our fields after they had harvested the, the crops off from them, why then they would put them out in the in the field. So you were you raised crops in this the fall field by your house and then after like you would harvest the crops and then you put the cows in there? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. But we only had what, ninety acres of uh, cultivated ground. Then then we sold the part over west. Yeah. And how I always heard that Grandpa Miller didn't like horses. He wasn't a horseman. He didn't he didn't like to ride the horses. So how would he round up the cattle? On foot? Didn't we? Isn't that the way we did it? On the motorcycle. <laughs> I just think that's great. I can't imagine like it it would be pretty bumpy, right? <laughs> But that's the way we used to, he used to take that down to the pasture and when we'd trail the cows home. Yeah, we'd use the pickups. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why I don't like horses, huh? <laughs> it's all Grandpa Miller's fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm bred, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, what were your, what were your duties on, while you guys were living there on the farm? Did you mostly do? Well, I, I've I thinned beets one year, <laughs> and uh, hoed the in the. We raised. You took care of us, and you cooked the meals. Yeah. You know. Uh huh. And helped him when he needed needed me. So you were more taking care of the house and yeah, yeah, and the kids and stuff, and the chickens and the pigs and the <laughs> well, and the we raised those calves that we uh, yeah. they'd drink out of the bucket. You guys just had a milk bucket that you would well, you know that they could. <laughs> How fun. And do you want to talk about that house at all? Was it, were you guys short on space and stuff once again? Since you had how many, five? What? Five kids? Was it a smaller house or? Well, when you moved out there, you guys made the kitchen bigger. And then oh, we took in the front porch and made, uh, the the front porch went around across the the front and the back. the side of the, or the back and and we enclosed that in and so we had a big living room it's probably as big as as your living room here and uh you made the kitchen bigger too yeah Well, we had a bathroom. So what was? <laughs> it was on the back porch. <laughs> Go ahead. But, well, we closed it in, and we have a shower and a toilet and a, a sink, a wash bowl in it. And did the, the toilet flush, or did you guys have indoor plumbing and stuff? Uh-huh. Yeah, we had a septic tank, and the, the toilet flushed. How would you describe your spouse and what you would 
what he mattered most about Roll? Well, he was always thoughtful and uh, I don't know, we got along pretty good together most of the time. <laughs> We didn't have very many arguments or problems. We just, I, I don't know. Well, he was a good provider. Yes. Mm -hmm. I hear he had a pretty quick wit, too. Is that right? Yeah, he did. <laughs> yes. Can you think of anything more, Janice? Oh, about Dad? Uh-huh. I mean, he'd, he'd make time for, you know, fun things in, this, in, in between crops Why we'd go to Wyoming, fishing. And he'd never been fishing till he went to Wyoming. <laughs> and they took him into Devil's Canyon the, the first time we went over. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know whether he'd ever want to fish again. But he did. <laughs> oh, he Yeah. Smith Creek, we go yeah. often. Uh, we'd, go, we'd go camping. Uh -huh. He enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. At Lake Tahoe, they had an elders quorum activity when, a, when the earthquakes came. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did you choose your children's names? Was there any... Or did they just sound good to you? No. <laughs> I, I was... Yeah. Primary president. And I like that name. And I was trying to think how I chose your name. But, but but I knew I liked it, you know. <laughs> Eldon is Nathan Eldon Tanner, right? Is where he got. Was that the time that he was? He was a general authority. General authority, uh huh. And Laverne Parmley was was it the. General or Relief Society president. Mm -hmm. And do you want to talk about Elaine at all? Um, Ask me any question you want to. Okay. I'm, <laughs> You're here? All right. So she was born after Eldon, right? Oh, yeah. Yes, right. she's. Uh, she was born in 58. She was four years younger than he was. And uh, when did she start having problems that we... Just a year and a half. A year and a half. But she was a really special, you know. I mean, she... Uh, it had been four years since I'd had a baby, and it was just so fun. Shirley Tucker said, you know, huh? Shirley Tucker noticed Elaine's eye that something was wrong. Or I, I couldn't remember what. Uh, anyway, she had had her eye removed. She had cancer. Had cancer in her eye and had had it removed and had an artificial eye. And uh, we took her to San Francisco. Uh huh. So she had cancer in her eye. Mm -hmm. and, and she'd had her eye removed and she had an artificial eye, but she hadn't had it very long when she had that stroke or seizure or whatever it was. And 
did that did that kill her? Mm-hmm. That? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And she was only was that she was was she three? That was Jet no, she was that was January of at sixty. So she was just a year and a half old. Thirtieth of January, wasn't it, that she died on the thirtieth of January? I think that's when it was. What did your family enjoy doing together? Going fishing and uh, but uh, but we we would go out and and camp and fish and have fish dinner and <laughs> it was fun. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, describe a, a normal dinner at your house. Did all the kids pitch in and help or? What would you like to make, or...? Well, you kids used to help, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we always had meat, because there was beef cattle, right? Yeah. So a meal was pretty much planned around the meat and the vegetables that you grew we raised. We raised a big garden all the time. And uh, potatoes and gravy and vegetable and a salad and and usually bread of some kind. I always made bread. I don't know. I don't ever just living on bottom bread. No. <laughs> I mean, we always once in a while you might buy a loaf of bread, but. A we uh, we uh, raised cantaloupe. And, uh, corn and things like that that we, you know, ate out of the garden. We probably wouldn't have survived if we hadn't had uh, a garden. <laughs> and would you, you would have to buy flour, right? Oh, yeah. You ground lots of wheat. Oh yeah, I had a wheat grinder and we we ground <laughs> ground wheat. But that was later years that we that we did that. I still use my wheat grinder. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my mom. <laughs> oh, fun. Did you ever go to school after high school or was it I I just went to that uh School that I went to in Cheyenne. Okay, sheet metal. Uh, I stayed home one year after I graduated from high school, but I worked in the hot lunch room. And uh, it seems like I took some classes for something, and I don't, I can't remember what it was. It might have been through church, you know, uh -huh. that I did that. But I did have a, a, a certificate that I graduated from high school. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, that's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> I had just asked her about how going clear back, you know, to the, when she was little, you know, how they, she t told me about how they only had three dresses a year, and, and who well, okay. to make them. And, and Ona, that was, uh, mom, well, she was mama's cousin, and he was, Uncle Danny was daddy's brother, but we would buy the material and take it to her, and she would cut a pattern and, and cut out our dresses, and then Mama would sew them up. Would would sew them, and we had three dresses, and we wore a, a dress for a week or whatever, and then next week we got to wear a clean one. And but when we came home from school, we changed our clothes. We always changed our clothes when we came home from school. Because we had chores to do and, you know, things like that that we needed to do. And so 
we had to keep our our clothes clean. And would you would you wear pants when you're doing your chores, or would you still have to wear a dress? We wore uh, overalls <laughs> quite a bit, I think. But because girls weren't allowed to wear pants in school back then, right? I, I, we wore dresses to school all the time mm -hmm. until I got into to high school and we took P.E. and then we had, um, they, they come down to your knees and they had sleeves in them and, uh, like a jumpsuit, uh -huh. cut off. Uh-huh. <laughs> we wore those for P.E. Uh-huh. Wow. Girls didn't wear Levi's or or jeans, bib overalls or any kind of to school. I mean, no, that was not part of your. <laughs> Tell Sally who your father, how how your father made money. What did he do for a job? Grandpa Baird, my grandpa. <laughs> well, when? Because well. he herded sheep for for years. We had our own sheep, and then he sold his sheep, and, they, and then he worked for Claude Lewis, and he'd get $50 a month. And, and he'd go out and stay out in the, in the summertime. He'd stay out in the mountains with the sheep, and then they'd bring him in in the fall, and he'd help with the shearing, and... And that's that's when we added that on to the house was when he was working for Claude and he loaned us enough money to, to build those three back rooms on and and he paid it back ten dollars a month out of his so he'd get forty dollars a month instead of fifty. So money was tight. Uh huh. So what did you uh, kids you you talked about to get to go where? You'd get candy at the drugstore. Oh. Sometimes your dad would give you a quarter. We'd give a quarter. It was penny candy. It's uh, like all the little, what do you call them now? Uh, but we'd go, daddy'd give us a quarter, and we'd go up to the to the drugstore and stand there and pick out 25 pieces of candy, or, or the, the brownies and the blackies. They were three for a penny, and that the blackies were licorice, and the brownies were were chocolate. And we'd pick out the the different pieces of candy and go home and put them in a bowl, and we'd get to take choose a piece. You know, they'd pass it around, and then pass it around again. I think we usually got three pieces of candy, but the there was like the little baby Ruths and the little Butterfinger. Was, that now I don't know what you pay for them. They have those small ones, but I know you don't get them for three for a penny. No. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine and, and Helen used to clean the theater, and then they got free tickets to go to the theater, and so we got to go to the theater once in a while. It cost a quarter to go to the theater. <laughs> wow. Times have changed. Huh? A ten cents for kids and a quarter for adults. So we used to get to go to a movie once in a while. When you said your dad uh, did the sheep, well, in the wintertime, what did they do with the sheep camp? Oh, well, we... Uh, that was before they added on to the house. They brought the sheep camp, one that they weren't using, while well, they brought it and, and parked it there by the house, and us kids slept in it. We, we took... Have you ever been in a sheep camp and have any idea what it's like? I don't. Okay, across the back, there's a bed. And underneath the bed, why there's a a hollow space underneath and there's a, a a door about this big and about that high 
that opened up into that space under the bed and that you could store stuff back in there. And then on each side, why there was a, the, the, the bed of the wagon was just like this wide, and then it came out about, up about this high, and then it came out and then come up around like this, so that there was, uh, and then there was benches along the, these here. And so you could open them up and put things down in in part of that bench part. It wasn't all, there was one spot that had the bench part in it. And so we could store things underneath. We took the, the table, the table pushed back underneath the bed, and we took the table out and laid it across the, we could make a bed there and then had the bed up where the bed was. That's that's the way we used it to sleep in. So So would it be kinda of like a camp trailer nowadays? Was it uh -huh. equivalent to But that? who was it? Marguerite and and was it Catherine and I that got back in that little cubby hole and somebody shut the door and it latched and we couldn't, it was one of these that, you know, you push from the outside or turn it and it would move and we couldn't get out. And here we were in that trapped under the bed, trapped under the bed. and I don't remember how long it was before somebody come hunt us. We hollered and hollered, couldn't get anybody to hear us and how long we were in that sweat box. It's what it ended up in the summertime, you know, and and it was just so hot in there. And, <laughs> there's, and I think Marguerite's the one that shut the door. They wanted to see how many of us could get in that little cubby hole, and then she shut the door, and there was no way we could. It didn't work from the inside. Yep. <laughs> well, in fact, you know how when you close a, a door, there's a little tiny crack like this. It didn't have a overlap. The, there was a crack, and we'd take turns getting up there so we could get air from that through that crack. I mean, that's how serious it was. Yes. <laughs> You got a good family. Tell you might tell Sally how many grand how many grandchildren and how many great grandchildren. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I have, there's 37 grandchildren and 74 or 75. I forget. Great, great grandchildren and there's what of the grandchildren. There's seven that aren't married. I think we counted, didn't we? The seven that weren't married, but most of them have. Either been married in the temple or, or gone to the temple, and I feel like that's a a good <laughs> good legacy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how would how would you like people to remember you? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Just for who I am, I guess. <laughs> she always served well in her calling. I was going to ask you about that, about church callings and stuff. Do you remember any? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to talk about those a little bit? Well, I started out by probably being a beehive teacher when I was down in Vallejo. <laughs> I'm not sure whether I whether I taught beehives then or not. I think I did though. I know I taught beehives in after we moved to Fallon, and I've worked in the uh, primary presidency. I've worked in the release of been the stake relief society president, and two times, <laughs> wow. and. Uh, Now, all I'm doing is uh, 
visiting teacher supervisor, I guess. It got too hard for me to, somebody had to come and get me and take me, you know, and, and so they made me the visiting teacher supervisor of oh, five districts or something. And uh, and I do lots of quilting. We quilt, tie quilts at, at Relief Society, or uh, whatever you call it now. <laughs> huh? Enrichment. Enrichment, yeah. Talk about the quilts. Well. For your grandchildren. Oh. Did she get one? Mm -hmm. Is it the old-fashioned girl? Yep. <laughs> I love it. That's my favorite quilt. <laughs> I, I didn't start making those when I, because I was up to Gary's and he showed me the quilt I made for him, and it was a nine patch, but that was before I got my quilting frames and before I got that pattern. But everyone I think since I got that pattern has gotten a. Uh, the old-fashioned girl, and I've still got two or three of them in the closet. <laughs> uh, I love to quilt, and I, I like to crochet, but my hands are so crippled up now, I, it's hard for me to crochet. And I, when I made those last uh, stockings, that, that I crocheted on the top of them. Oh. That's, I, I gave them to my visiting teachers for Christmas last year. And I thought I was never going to get them crocheted because my hands crochet even. But I've made all those. Uh, for each one of my families, I've got one of those, uh, what do you call them? Chicken scratch quilt, uh, tablecloths. Your mom's got one. Okay. And I made, and I made one for Annie Heyer. That's the Carolyn's friend that lives over in Orem. And she saw Carolyn's and she thought it was so pretty. And so, I, uh, I made one for her and give it to her for, for her birthday. I think that's when I gave it to her. And she was going to put it away and save it and give it to her daughter. And I said, don't you do that. I said, you use it. <laughs> but it, it uh, when I first started making these, it took me about 40 hours to do by the time I marked it and got it all finished. But then the last one I made, I thought I was never going to get it done. My hands were so stiff and Laverne helped me mark it and we missed marked it and so I was glad when I made seven of these. I mean seven. I made one for Janice, and that's where I got the pattern from. Her her yellow one that she had in the basket yesterday. That was one of the first ones I made. More than that. So you like to I like to read. You like to read? Uh-huh. Yeah, I've read, I don't know how many books, especially since I haven't been able to do much. I've read all the series of uh, work the, glory. the Work and the Glory, and I've done all these uh, little pamphlet ones. They're, they're like, there's seven books in a series. But like I say, I, I like to read. Lots going. But Ani just couldn't get over that tablecloth, so I thought, well, I'll make her one. And then she was going to keep it and save it for her daughter. But see, now when I made Janice's, it wasn't as big as it is. Uh, it, were the checks, where is yours? 
Are the checks smaller in that? Because I know I did not, that these are bigger than, than that one was that I had made for her. But it, hers has been used so much and I'm so glad she used it. Oh, it's just. It's the same. I mean, they're just a tiny bit smaller, the check, but. We tried to make them the same. <laughs> oh, why did I think that that uh, that these red ones were so much bigger? I don't know. Huh? <laughs> well, they are, aren't they? Yeah. It's just a little tiny bit difference in the in the gingham, you know, over forty years. <laughs> Well, I'm glad to find that out, because <laughs> I thought that yours was smaller, well, it is but it's not, not that much. Not a lot, but... <laughs> and who else did I make one, one like that for that... You're the only one that... That got the orange one? <laughs> I know you and Aunt June both made them. Does Aunt June, do Aunt, do Aunt June and Uncle Charlie still live in Fallon? June's been dead for, since 62. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Sorry. 80. Uh, huh? I think it was 1980 that she died, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, she was 62 when she, she died. Still. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and Charlie's gone, gone too. too. <laughs> yeah. But he married, remarried. Mary Taylor. For a long time. Because Mary's been married. Who did she marry? Fred Taylor was her first husband. Yeah. Uncle Alfred's the only remaining one of Dad's siblings. And all of Mom's siblings are still alive. Except Aunt June. She's the only one who's gone. <laughs> oh, okay. Dorothy died, but that's Leo's wife. Uh -huh. And Uncle Ray died. And, yeah. Uncle, Aunt and Aunt Catherine's. Husband. And Uncle Clarence died, but that's Bessie's husband. <laughs> Like when did or you guys retired in the eighties maybe? We retired. Did you guys? Have I haven't retired yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> I don't know. Not it. We didn't retire that long ago. What do you call retired? Well, when Dad quit working. Yeah. <laughs> when did he start leasing out the ranch? And selling the cattle and, you know. Well. Probably in the late 80s. Because you bring her to Salt Lake and serve. When was that? 88. So you were gone a whole year doing that. Yeah. And they, they served nine years in the... In the Oakland Temple. But they would go one week out We'd go... Right. You want to talk about that really quick? Well, we were called to, to work in the... I guess it was right after the Oakland Temple was built, wasn't it? We were called to work in the Oakland Temple, and we'd go down one week a, a month and stay uh, work. Uh, we'd go down on Monday because the temple was closed on Monday. We'd go down on Monday and work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and s Saturday morning. And then we would come home, and uh, we did that for 
eight years, and then the temple was closed for a year while they uh, did some uh, re remodeling on it. And then we went back and worked another year. And then when we were coming back, that one time why he ran off the road and hit a bump, and we we decided that was time we better quit, you know, because I didn't drive. I mean, the traffic is so bad down in that area, and it's much worse now than it was then. That, but uh, I didn't drive, and so then that's when we asked to be released. But we had worked for nine years down there. Driving down to Oakland every month from Fallon? Mm-hmm. We, uh, the one year, it was it was split eight years, and then the, the, it was closed for a year while they did the remodeling, and then we worked a year, just almost exactly a year after that. So we worked, all together, we worked nine years down there. And then your family history mission was a year. Yeah, and that was in Salt Lake. We we worked for a year in the family history library. We uh, did extraction there. We lived just across, not too far from Temple Square, that we could walk. We lived close enough that we could walk. We got there, so we just we'll leave our car in the parking lot and through our parking lot and history center there. There for a year. Which was fun. <laughs> and so of course we got to go to the temple more often that way. <laughs> so And when did Lowell's health start to to go downhill? Then <laughs> it was that was one reason that we quit was because of he was already uh, having problems, but he was still able to to drive. And but when he got to where he couldn't drive, why? And seeing that was when probably nineteen ninety ninety ish. So it was you know. Parkinson's and diabetes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you took care of them for. Well, the family helped me. <laughs> yeah. help you that's that's oh. all right. The I just forgot the, what it was. the The family has been so good to help me. Uh, Laverne was working at the school, and. Uh, she quit, and I paid her what she would have gotten at the school. And so I didn't want her to, you know. And then, and then Carolyn and Dave, even though they both work, why they would help me. Sharon comes once in a while, but she's got her own. But, but like I say, the, I wouldn't have been able to have taken care of him as long as I did if, if it hadn't been for for the family being so good to help me out. In fact, you know, I shouldn't say this, but it was almost a relief when Grandpa died. I mean, because he was, well, he'd laid flat on his back for two or three days that that he couldn't even move. And uh, it, it was, I mean, he was so miserable. And so it, it really was a blessing for him to to go but like I say it's it's lonesome but I wouldn't want him back and have him to go through that again like he was mm -hmm. and he went he went peacefully right yes yes in fact he had a, a hospital bed right alongside of my bed and I woke up and I thought, I can't hear him breathing. 
And so I got up and I went around there and he was gone. I mean, it was... Good thing we know about eternal families, right? Thank goodness. <laughs> That's one thing that, that I look forward to most is seeing Grandpa up there. Because I, my whole life, I never really knew him without Parkinson's and diabetes. And oh, yeah. So I just can't wait to meet him, you know? Like, well, <laughs> if he's anything like he used to be, why, well, you'll enjoy it. <laughs> right, Janice? <laughs>